Hate gets under a man's skin. Spoils his whole life. It's like a bad growth, kid. You've got to get rid of it. Yes, sir. I'm for you. You know that, or else I wouldn't have worked so hard to get you paroled. I know that, sir. I've got one last piece of advice for you. Stay away from the Dalton gang. They're my friends, Warden. I never rode with them, but they're still my friends. You've got a job waiting for you at Major Halsell's HX Bar Ranch. Thanks. That's your country, Doolin. Cimarron River country. Right. There's a train ticket here for Oklahoma City. Yeah, you'll be there in a couple of days, then take the train for Guthrie. All right, sir. HX is only about eight miles out of Guthrie, isn't it? About six. You know, I think I'll keep this as a present from you to me. All right. It's all yours, Warden. Good luck to you, kid. Stay out of trouble. And remember, a parole can be a very temporary thing. Bye, Mr. Gans. Lots of luck, Doolin. Thank you. Everybody. Come on, come on. All right, folks, start filling the sack. I'll take that, too. You can sit down, man. Come on, hand it over. All right, everything, mister. Just keep it going steady. Don't be bashful. Hand it over. Well, what do you know? Hey, ain't this your little friend? Shut up. Sorry, Sonny. He's always making some mistake. All right, give it two blasts now. We've got you dead to rights. I've been watching you, and you're one of them. All right, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say Letters from his valise prove that Doolin was on that train. Marshal, what more evidence do you want? You're a good detective, Swanson, but you can't persuade me that finding Doolin's bag on a train convicts him just like that. I got ten witnesses who will swear against him. What'll they swear? That he was part of the Dalton fix on that train. If you remember, Doolin was convicted before and sentenced. Railroaded might be a better word. I don't like that, Marshal. But I happen to like the kid, Swanson. I've known him a long time. There's nothing bad about him. As attorney for the railroad, I can say frankly that we want to be fair with Doolin. I've hesitated to obtain a warrant against him. I'd rather leave it up to you, Marshal, to uh, bring him here, uh, just for a talk. About what, Mr. Thompson? Just some questions about the Daltons. That's all. All right. But you've got to promise me he gets a square deal. He will. Good day, Marshal. Good day, sir. See you again, Marshal. Same here. You mind riding into Guthrie? What for? The railroad detective there wants to ask you some questions. Swanson? Yeah. Wants to talk to you about that train robbery a couple of days ago. Says it was the Daltons. Says you're part of the outfit. You know that isn't true. I believe you. Are you going to be at this meeting? 
Well, I wish I could, Bill, but I've got to catch a train for Oklahoma City in just about an hour. But I want you to go in there by yourself. Set them straight about the holdup. Tell them all you know. All right. I'll just tell them the truth. They'll be waiting for you in Lawyer Thompson's office. See you soon, Bill. Thanks. Oh, yes. Will you go in, please? I'm glad you came in, Mr. Doolin. My name is Thompson. How do you do? I believe you know Mr. Swanson. Uh, you two gentlemen will have to excuse me. I have some legal work at court. I'll see you later. Take off your hat. Sit down. Now, let's start fresh. Let bygones be bygones. I wasn't to blame for what happened to you. I... All right, get out. Kid, now you and me are going to have a nice little family conference. Where are the Daltons hiding out? I've got nothing to say to you, mister. You were right with them. You were one of them. You were with them on that last job. Stop trying to frame me again, Swanson. I served my time. Yeah, and you'll serve a lot more. Twenty years. Unless you can tell me where to pick up the Daltons. And another thing, when I do, you'll testify against him in court. You hear that? In court! You're no good, Swanson. You never was any good. What was your cut on that last Dalton job? I got no cut. You'll never make a story like that stand up in court. Don't tell me what I can't do. You know, I'm not very smart. There's a $10,000 reward for the capture of Bob Dalton. You can have that full $10,000. All right. You're good for a return journey to that state prison, unless you make a deal with me right here and now. I'll take your brains all over this room! <laughs> Certainly wish someone could cheer the kid up. Hey, Bitter Creek, maybe you could cheer him up. Yep, looks like we got a warrior on our hands. 
been set that way for an hour. It's just that I can't make up my mind what to do. Looks to me like you don't have much choice, kid. Don't forget you broke your parole and must up a couple of detectives. You want to know the Bob Dalton thing? I think you ought to throw in with us. Bob, maybe if I saw Marshall... Oh, he maybe... can't square nothing for you, kid. You got too many charges stacked against you. Looks like you're riding the same colored horse as us Daltons. You ain't no free agent no more, and you can't move around like one. You're caught in a trap and break out or stay in. Either way, they got you. And another thing, that fellow Swanson's an avenging fool. Why, I was ranching out in California and doing good for myself, too. And suddenly, this railroad dick rides up and accuses me of being leader in a train holdup. Why, I had to break jail to get here. Which goes to prove something, kid. If Red Buck there hadn't popped his mouth off the train, you wouldn't be in this fix now. All right, Mort. All right. I already said I was sorry. What do you want me to do, keep on saying it? Well, Red's a tough armory in the clinch is all right, but he ain't very clever. <laughs> he don't think so fast, neither. No, only the Daltons are clever. The brain kids think fast all the time. That's right, Red. You never said nothing true in all your life. Well, even our little brother Will there is smarter than you, and he hasn't joined up with us yet. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of us fellas here, is, has anybody ever heard of the name Red Buck? Maybe they will after tomorrow. You ain't going on the Coffeeville raid. Since when? Since now. How come? Well, it's like I said, Red, you don't think very fast. You're, you're tough, but you don't think fast enough. Anything else? Yeah. You don't shoot so good, neither. Know somebody better? Kid, you got a minute. Come on. Don't make me out a liar, kid. Come on, Red. Bill. This better be good. Nice <laughs> shoot. shoot. Good enough for me, kid. Hey, dynamite! That'll be the boss at Independence. You take your orders from him. Does he tell me how to blow up a county courthouse safe? He'll be the leader. That's no fooling. All right, leader. That's a raw deal you handed me, Bob. Oh, I don't think so, Red. You always wanted to be a leader, and now you are. Second division. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna be aced out of my share of Coffeeville. You'll get it. So will Dynamite in Tulsa. Now, you'll be leveling at Independence the same time as us at Coffeeville. So do a neat job and get away fast. We're all of us heading back here, ain't we? Well, we're not expecting any trouble, but if we do, I, we figure they'll throw out a big net for us. Bob was well, I kind of figured that, well, they'd be expecting us to head for here, so why don't we cross them up? We'll go straight to Pat Roberts' cow ranch. Yeah, well, maybe Pat Roberts don't like us anymore. I understand he's turned on us in a big way. Oh, Pat's all right. Don't you worry about him. If we get in trouble, he'll help us out. Now, I, I guess you fellas better get saddled up. Thanks. I don't think Red likes you very much. <laughs> ah, quite a hideout, ain't it? Ain't no peace officer gonna trail us in here without he gets lost or belted around by a lot of lead. Hey, Stacy, think you could rustle us up a couple of covered wagons? Sure can. Clothes for six of us, make us look like emigrants on the trail? Gotcha. All right, then you meet us outside Ochita. You know the spot in the Cherokee Strip. Sure do. Uh, better bring along some medicines, too, just in case. I always carry them. 
Just in case. Will you tag along here with Stacy? Oh, Bob. You promised. I know I did, but not yet. You're too young. Coffeeville's too tough. You're elected, kid. This job calls for six of us. Could have taken Red. Oh, no, he's too ambitious. He wants to make a reputation all on his own in a hurry. Kid, this Coffeeville deal is really going to be something big. A double bank hold up in broad daylight. More money than you ever dreamed of getting your hands on in your whole life. Well, they'll be writing ballads about us Daltons after this. It's bigger than anything them James boys ever dreamed of. Just think of it. Two banks at the same time. After this, I'm going far away. Argentina. No fooling. You're gonna buy me a cattle ranch there. And there's a new world for a man like me. Nobody to know I was ever an outlaw. And no fear somebody taking a pot shot at me just to get a reputation for himself. Yes, sir, after this one, I'm taking myself right off to Argentina. Bob, I don't think the kid's got the real picture of Coffeeville yet. This is really something. Something me and Bob is timed in time. Here's the way she's gonna go, kid. We'll pull out of here tonight as soon as it gets dark. At 8 o'clock in the morning, we'll be in the outskirts of Coffeeville. Bob's timed our entrance to the very second. Now, we split up and enter town from the opposite directions, passing each other on the main street at exactly 8.45. Me and Grat and Big Jim, we're riding your horses. We tie up across from the Coffeeville Bank. Now you and Emmett and Bitter Creek, you're riding our horses. You tie up across from the Union Bank. The bank opens for business at 9 o'clock sharp, but the cashiers and the rest of the help, they guess there at 8.45. All except Mr. Vice President Juergens of the Coffeeville Bank. He gets there at 8.50. 8.50 exactly, just as regular as clockwork. Now. Just when he goes to unlock the door. Don't get excited, Mr. Jurgens. We're going in with you. Get over there. Sit down. Let's see your hands. All right, all of you. Come on. Back in that corner. Which one of you is the head cashier? I am, sir. Come on. Open it. You've got just about 30 seconds. that door and walk in quietly. Safe. I'm afraid that's impossible. That safe works in a time like it. Opens at 8.55. All right. We'll wait. Who's that? Speak up! Mr. Jurgens. Hey, bro! 
robbery. Get it. Bank robbery. Nobody's gonna get hurt. Come on, move. Hi, kid. Hello, Stacy. Kid. My brothers. All of them? Bitter. What's the matter? You need much, honey. Why didn't you say something? What do you want me to do, Bill? Stay in Coffeeville and get it bandaged? Rose, you sure you don't want me to? No, Stacy. That was Bitter Creek. A sign or a smell of them, despite all these reports. Everybody's hunting for them here around the Five Nations Indian Territory. Down near the Ingalls. Well, maybe the Daltons figured it that way and decided to cross us up around here. See, they moved south, Kansas up here, then west, and uh, that sparsely settled country there, just a few ranches. Hey, I know one or two cattlemen there. One of them might be interesting to talk to. I'll go with you, Marshal. Well, at least my independence deal worked out all right. We got the cash. All right. So now we're going to go right back to Coffeeville and stick up them two banks. And this time, if the citizens give us any trouble, we're going to shoot up the whole town. Red, you're crazy. Don't you tell me. 
I wouldn't go through that Coffeeville thing again for all the gold in Kansas. What's the matter, kid? Afraid? No. Well, then I think you better give us a reason. I don't believe in unnecessary killing. Oh, he don't believe in unnecessary killings. <laughs> well, now, ain't that too bad? There'd be plenty of it on both sides if we went back there. You coming with me? Bill's right. If we went back there, they'd shoot us to pieces. I'm agreeing with a kid. So am I. Me too. Me too. <laughs> well, Red, speaking as an innocent bystander, I'd say you've been overruled. All right. All right, maybe we should just throw away our guns altogether. Maybe we should just forget that the law is chasing us. Well, let me tell you something. From now on, I'm making all the rules. I got a rule of my own it might do you good to remember. Be no killing unless it's forced on us. Of course, this might be one of them times, like I said. Well, then, it looks like we got ourselves a new leader. I wonder who that could be. Where do we go, Pat? The stables. John Sutton. Glad to see you. Same here, Pat. Well, it's been a long time. Oh, I want you to meet a friend of mine, Sam Swanson. How are you? You remember my daughter. How do you do? How do you do, ma'am? Mr. Swanson. How do you do? Well, I'll lay a bet that something mighty important brings you all the way out here. It is. The Dolphins. What about the Dolphins? You got two new wagons there, Pat? No. No, I'm just keeping them for a friend. Wait here. Uh... Well, would you care to come inside, Mr. Swanson? No, thank you. I'll wait here. This probably won't take long. Mind if I look in your barn? Well, of course not. The Dalton's raided Coffeeville. You ain't heard about it, eh? No, it's the first time. I suppose they... They got slaughtered. All but two of them. stock here, Pat. Well, I've been a little lucky. <laughs> What's eating you, John? I've been on both sides of the law, and well, I'd feel complimented if you sort of laid the cards on the table. All right, Pat. I said two of them got away. You think they might be here? I didn't say that, Pat. Could be, though. There's no sense in us talking in the dark like this. Uh, oh. One of them answers to the name of the Cimarron Kid. Well, that name doesn't spell anything to me. I'm sorry. Would you recognize it if I spell it to Reed Doolin? Bill Doolin? Well, that name does sound familiar. Though I don't know where or what for. You're doing pretty good in the cattle business, Pat. Thanks. It's building. Maybe someday I'll have something. Oh, uh, this fellow I mentioned, this Doolin, if you ever see him, 
Oh. When you see him, tell him I said thanks for giving me an edge. Tell him also I'm sure sorry I have to keep on going after him. Although he's riding the wrong horse now, maybe it's because he's had a cold deck shuffle all the way down the line. And maybe it ain't too late to make a deal. Yeah, 50 years. Of course, I can't guarantee anything. Pat, you've been a good law-abiding citizen since you took this place over. But harboring outlaws is obstructing justice, in case you didn't know it. So long. Let's go. Get in there. I'll tell you this, we're lucky to be leaving this place alive. on you when you get the chance he's gonna kill you someday. It's a superstition I got. Keep it to yourself. Boys, I'm afraid you'll have to go. Come daylight, there'll be a dozen deputies swarming around here. They'll stake out this place for months. I've been straight since I came to the territory from Texas, and I want to keep on that way. All I ask is... You won't is... be bothered with us anymore, Pat. That's promise. As a matter of fact, uh, we're pulling out right now. The saddle up. Yeah, let's get Thanks going, boys. It's been nice seeing you again, Pat. How's it feel to be honest? I'll do it. I'll ride up on the back with you. Honey, you ain't going. Don't ever say that, ever. I go with you, always. But this is too dangerous. I know. It's a bad life and a bad way to live. But I go with you. Can I talk to you? Sure. Straight talk? Yeah. I know that a man don't like a woman who preaches to him, tells him what to do and how to run his life and all that. But I listened to what you said inside the house and it made sense. About gunplay and all that. Why don't you give it up? It's too late for that now. What do you think you're going to get out of all this? Money? Spend on yourself? For gambling? For a girl? None of them things. What then? Land. Land? Where? Place far away. I once heard a fellow talking about a place called Argentina. He said with a proper amount of money, you can build yourself a big cattle ranch there. He also said, you might even figure to start yourself a new life. Listen to me. You're crazy. You're all crazy. Rose and Bitter Creek. She should leave him, but she won't because she's in love. And all the time, they're heading straight to death on a dark road. You, too. You're on that same road. Excuse me, Miss Carey. There's a new cattle town called Boonesville. Dad and I go there whenever he's cattle to sell. Boonesville. I remember. Go well, kid. What's the matter, Stace? Aren't you coming with us? It's all the same to you. I'd rather not this time. I'd just like to go on home. I don't blame you. Come on.
notice one thing about the kid's operations. The way he moves around. He circles wide, never repeats a town. Dives east, then west. I'm putting a detective in every town where the rails go through. It'll be a big net. Maybe we can pull in the fish that way. You'll have to get the rail companies to stand the expense, all right? I think it can be arranged. Well, if it can be arranged, and it should be, this is exactly what I want to do. We put one man here, one man at Pawnee, one man at Seminole. Coffee. Northbound train, 10.42 p.m. Station master name of Billingsley. About 50, not too tough. How big is the hole? Payroll. Where would section workers going up to Chicksaw? $18,000. The way she wangles information out of people. Rose, you're wonderful. You know that Swanson fellow's really gonna learn to hate it. What happened to you, Guadalupe? Must have gotten torn off in that last raid. I looked all over for it, Rose. I keep telling her I, I shouldn't wear one of these things. Just doesn't seem right. I mean, with me... It's right for me to pray for you. Rose thinks it helps protect me. I'm just lucky. I don't know, Bitter. Maybe it does help. I used to believe... It helps that... me, Bill, not him. It helps me to believe that maybe I can plan on something else someday. Excuse me. Hello, Bill. I came into town with Dad. He just sold a herd of cattle, so we'll be starting. We'll be getting run over. We don't get out of the street. <laughs> Aren't you taking an awful chance being seen in a town like this? No more than any other town. Besides, I wanted to come here, Carrie. I hoped I'd get a chance to talk to you, but I don't know. Don't get panicky. Who's panicky? Let's look at these pretty doodads over here. Let's go inside. Howdy, folks. What can I do for you? We're just looking around. Uh, we're looking for some jewelry, please. Oh, jewelry? Uh, yes, just one minute, please. Uh, you see, our, uh, our jewelry department is way over here. Now, uh, what kind of jewelry? Uh, rings. Uh, engagement rings. Of course. Sure enough, must be spring. You're the third couple this week. Now, here you are. Lover's knots, hearts and forget-me-nots. Diamonds in every one. Oh, uh, this is the one we want. Uh, isn't this beautiful, darling? Yes. How much is it? Sixty dollars, even. But you two got more to do than stand around and stare at folks? I got more to do. I'd like to know your name. I think that's anyone's business, including yours. I'm bound to make it my business. <laughs> well, Johnny Adams, are you in luck? I just made a big, fat, juicy deal. And it means a lot of money in the bank for me. And, son, you're going to find me the best father-in-law a boy ever had. <laughs> Let me see that ring. Well, honey, that's beautiful. Dad, the day's gonna come when the Adams family will own more cattle than you ever dreamed about. That won't make me mad, Johnny. No, sir, you two kids go right ahead and be happy. <laughs> Excuse us. <laughs> They're gonna keep a mighty sharp lookout for anything, kid. I wouldn't be surprised. So I wouldn't try anything. It's off as of right now. You're a smart kid. Maybe you better ride with us. It'll look better. Thanks. Thanks, Pat. Wait a minute. Uh, what about the ring? It's all yours. Thank you. He's young enough looking. And too innocent. Adams. Johnny Adams. And just to be on the safe side, let's send a telegram to the boss. 
If he wants to alert everybody, that's up to him. We have to win in the palm of our hands at Boonesville. And a couple of my stupid men let him get away. Well, here's the situation as of right now. Marshal Johnston is around Pawnee. McWilliams is moving in from Seminole. This wire from Sutton just came in. Says he's picked up a warm trail at Drumright. He's maneuvering the kid so that he has to go to Columbia. Well, I'd say that looks good. I'd like to think so. Fact is, we've worn out a dozen posses already. Just so we keep the quarry in sight, there's always a chance. I got a feeling. This is the time. This is the killing. We ought to be hearing from Rose pretty soon. It's getting pretty tough on her, Bill. Every place we head for is being watched. Got to hand it to her, though. Don't know what we'd do without her. Sure is a swell gal to know. Yeah. I'll bet she is. What you want to bet, Red? Oh, maybe a belly full of bullets? There's about ten of them, kid. They picked me off the rock. I didn't even see him. Wonderful kids. How's the farming, Stacy? Oh, cotton crop failed this year. Broom corn, sorghum crop, they ain't doing so good me. Well, there's nothing that money won't cure. We'll be leaving something with you when we go. Look, you. You fellas come by your money the hardest way there is. I can't take it from you. If we want to give you money, you take it, Stacy. Oh, am I sure you ain't getting any? It's just like he says. We come by our money the hard way. If he don't want it, he shouldn't have to take it. Well, I'm in for a piece of that. What do we make it? Three thousand? Yeah, that's good. You're all right by me. Same here. Like it or not, you're in, Red. Where you fellas heading for? Well, it uh, looks like Columbia, Stacy. First, we're waiting to pick up a message. I sure do like that little town. Drink a little, gamble a little. Well, that's something. I remember riding through it that day after we left the hideout. Bob and... and Emmett, Greg. They sure figured they'd get back there again. Now, you sure it's safe? Of course it's safe. Everybody here was friendly with Bob Dalton. They'll like the kid, too. No reason why not. I've got plenty of room in my hotel for everybody. How big is the kid's outfit? Five. Oh, six, including me. <laughs> well, you tell him Lola Plummer will give him the key to the city. Well, he ain't much on ceremony, but I'll tell him. I thought you might like a little more tea before you go, Miss Rose. No, thank you, but I'll see you later. Bye, ma'am. Charlie. Bye.
$10,000 reward is a lot of money, ain't it, Jeff? Mr. Swanson? Mr. Swanson it is. Ain't got no brass band out to greet us. debate, Marshal. I promise you a fair trial, kid. I heard that once before. Well, Bill, it looks like we're going to have to come in and get you. Don't make any mistakes. You know, this has got a chance of getting a little rough. Get down and get inside. Thanks, John. Now I guess you'll have to come and get us. Thanks. It wasn't me, Rose. It was Mrs. Plummer. You all come here in them wagons. They're going to saddle horse among them. Look, if you can make it through the round house, the country opens up behind it. Kid, we got a chance. Don't shoot! Thanks for nothing, you fool. We're licked. I'll try to get on the other side of the train.
lucky. You're the lucky one. He could have shot you right between the eyes. This place used to be a lot of fun. That's right, Will. I don't guess I ever brought anybody any good luck. I didn't mean that, Bill. Uh, forget it. Coffee? Oh, thanks. How do you feel, kid? Same. It ain't just this anymore, bitter. That's a signal. Frightened, she sure did a heap of persuading, getting me to bring her up here. Of course, I was going to drop in on you anyway. Thanks, Stacy. Miss Carrie? Let me take a look at you. Be all right, Miss Carey. Somebody did a mighty fine job of fixing. Chuck, Stacy, I've been a good fixer ever since I was 12 years old. That's all they ever let me do. Yeah. Of course, I guess some of them things you just can't fix. It's such a nice day. Why are we all in here? Especially now that Bill has company. Bill. Once before, I asked to talk to you straight. This time, I want to level even more. All right. Go ahead and level. I'm not a little farm girl, Bill. I've grown up with your kind of man, and I've always hated them. Until now. And now that I've changed my mind about that, I've become selfish enough to think maybe I deserve a better break. We've never talked about us before. But we both know that we've got a chance, for the first time in our lives, for some happiness. For some of the things real people live for. What are you trying to say, Carrie? Get well and get out of here, Bill. Cross the border, find the land you want, and then send for me. With what? Dad says he'll sell the ranch. That's how it. Tell Pat I said things. All right, Bill. I'll tell him that. It's not that I don't appreciate it. It's just that... It's just that you're too proud to be helped. Cimarron kid. The country's most notorious robber. So clever that you end up here in this cold, filthy cave with a bullet hole in your side. You sure leveled. I had to, Bill. Maybe someday you'll... You'll know I'm right. Hey, Bill, it's dynamite. He breathes, he talks. He ain't even dead. Hmm. Well, anyway... Hmm, man, was I hungry. Anyway, although the fall knocked me out, that cold water was a lifesaver. I lay low for a while, and the posse went by. I climbed up this hill and saw some Mexican cowboys herding a bunch of cattle all the way to Dallas. They fixed me up and I head out with them. I decided to go along. <laughs> Man, that Dallas is an exciting town. Yeah, go ahead. Make me jealous. <laughs> boy, oh boy, what a time I had me. Seriously, though, who do you think I met there? 
General Grant. Go ahead. <laughs> my brother-in-law, fellow named Weber, George Weber. Married to my favorite sister. You know, the last time I saw him was in Illinois. He was working for the railroad. So? He's been stationed in the Southwest a couple of years. And with plenty of larceny in his heart. Still in the railroad business, I suppose. Express company messenger on the run from Galveston, Texas to Newton, Kansas. And? Twice a month, an American mining company in Mexico sends three bars of gold bullion by train from Galveston to the U.S. Mint at Denver. How much are they worth? Each bar weighs in the neighborhood of 90 pounds. Total value? About 100,000. Keep talking. Each bar is expressed in a box, and the box is nailed tight, bound with metal strips, and sealed. But this time, when they arrive in Denver, there ain't gonna be no gold in those boxes. Lit. You'll catch on fast. When does the switch make? In transit, as the saying goes. By you? Well, the master himself, the old safe dynamiter from Illinois. Do you believe in this scheme? I believe in my brother-in-law. He says it's bulletproof. It's worked out to the last detail. How does it go? He said he'll give it to us only if you play ball his way. What does he want out of it? One-fifth. How many men? Weber, four of us. How about you, Stacy? No, thanks, kid. You better count me out. Like I said before, I... I'll stay around here and take care of the horses. Listen, you couldn't come across anything better in a lifetime of trying. Maybe it's too good. All right, I'll answer questions. You say you met this Weber, this... Uh, Brother-in-law. In Dallas, huh? He's on a month's vacation. Can we talk to him? Sure. I'll get him for you. All right. Will? Yo. How would you like to ride along with dynamite? Well, that's for me. Come on. It's the only way out for me, Gary. Maybe this Weber deal will be the last one. Maybe. Maybe it'll mean our land, cattle, Argentina. Maybe, Bill. I'll ride on down the hill with Will and Dynamite. If it works out, I'll come for you. Yes, Bill. Nothing is going to happen to you and Carrie, Bill. Just like nothing is going to ever happen to Bitter Creek and me. Stacy. All right. Down we go. Bill, they are back. A little uncomfortable. I'm sorry we had to do that, Mr. Weber. Oh, that's all right. I know you fellas got to protect yourselves. Sit down. Oh, thanks. Dynamite uh, only told us part of the layout. Well, that's all they know to tell you. You telling us the rest of it? Well, I know you'll go into it and deal on the level with me. Uh, how much time do you have on your vacation? Two weeks. Two weeks. I wonder if you'd mind being our guest. Uh, not at all. If we can get together on this deal, we'll have lots to talk about. 
You know, I know you're good at your uh, business. But this job calls for a railroad man. Fair enough. Now that Mr. Weber's going to be our guest, I, I think you boys ought to show him around the place. We wouldn't want him to fall off a mountain in the dark, would we? All right, guess. Sounds all right, but just the same. Rose ought to go to Dallas. Right. Make a good check on Weber. That's important. You want to bet I won't? Come and sit by my side if you love me. Do not hasten to bid me adieu. And remember the rest. Oh, still. Oh. Well, well. And the cowboy. Somebody left the Golden Gate open and one of the angels got out. Who is this, Stella? My neighbor at the hotel. My name is Conchita Martino, senor. And this character with all the teeth and the pretty smile is called Silk Conrad, among other things. He's a gambler by trade and a woman fancier by a profession. He talks very nicely, senor Silly. Talking to you makes nice talk easy. This is Conchita's first day in Dallas. Oh, well, this calls for a celebration. Eddie. Champagne. Champagne? But of course. Oh, he likes to show off, too, darling. Why, when we're alone, I have to drink beer. This Dallas of yours is very beautiful, senor. And so are you, Angel. My George, he's the only one who ever told me that before. Want to go back to beer, honey? No, let it ride. But I'm hurt. I'll bet he's crazy about you. He tells me all the time. And you? I mean about him. Well, the same. I think. I wouldn't want to make a mistake. Well, perhaps I know him. What's the rest of his name? Weber. You know him? George Weber? Sure. He works for the railroad. That's him. You know him well? well I should. He leaves his wages at my poker table every payday. He has no money, yes? <laughs> he has no money, no. Oh. Not enough to keep you rigged out the way you should be, with jewels and everything. Why, he couldn't even buy you a hair ribbon. And he will get some money someday. <laughs> yes, uh, he told me once he expected to make a killing. I never saw a man so desperate for a bankroll. But now maybe I know the reason. Maybe, maybe might be too late. Looks to me, Conchita, like you picked the wrong man. Perhaps. But any man who is desperate for money will get it for me. We will drink. Excuse me, mister. Got a light? Yeah, sure. Thanks very much.
Now you be careful. I never did like this setup. You be careful. I should never let you come along. I always want to be with you. It makes me happy. So don't be selfish. Better? at the lumber yard pretty soon. Well, I'm ready. <laughs> Come on, lumber yard. This thing's getting heavy. Kind of nice for my little girl. Well, let's get him out of here. I'm the wife of the chief deputy out there. He would like that sent right through, please. All right. Glad to help out the law anytime. boxes in Denver, they're sure to pick me up. What can they prove? Nothing. Yeah, that's right. I'll deny all knowledge of the robbery. Me, I'll say. <laughs> Gentlemen, <laughs> them boxes wasn't open when I was gone. You no. said it, brother. Absolutely mortally impossible. <laughs> you said it. They must have been tampered with before they was put on the train in Galveston. Blame it on somebody in Mexico. That's what I'll say. Not me.
Yeah? George Weber? Yeah. Telegram for you, Mr. Weber. Oh, I'll stick it through the door. How much further to the lake, George? Uh, we got lots of time. Relax. Let's go over our rendezvous again, kid. When the train slows down for the water stop, you throw the golden jump. You hide the bar, then you walk around the lake to Lou Carter's place. Even if they know you, they'll never recognize you in that outfit. Ain't hey, dynamite? <laughs> That's right. You're gonna tell them that your rig broke down. Do you mind if I see that telegram, George? I can't do it, kid. Company business. I'd like to have a look at it anyway. Oh, George is all right. You said this was company business. Well, I said that because well, it's all Greek to me. I don't know anybody by the name of C. Rose. Sure you do. Cimarron Rose, remember? Oh, that's who it is. Well, I don't know why she'd send a wire like that to me. She meant it for me, Weber. She gambled I'd see it. Already got bitter Greek and probably Will Dalton. I'm next. And then done it. The way it is, Weber? Oh, kid, I swear, I don't know anything about it. Maybe it's some other way. How about it, Donna Mike? Oh, snap out of it, kid. What well, is wants an offer for all? 10,000, 20, 30, 50. <laughs> Spread out. Stay down. And nobody shoot till I do. Well, Save him for yourself, eh? Maybe. That looks all right. Try that for size. What are you trying to prove, kid? You're gonna get out and pick up that gold just like I was gonna do. I'm gonna be watching you mighty close. Come on. Kid, what about me? I'm hurt. Bad. You'll figure something, Weber. Had this time pretty good. They win. for the telegram. Pat, meet a couple of fresh horses. Carrie and I are heading for the border first thing in the morning. One horse, Bill. 
I'll, I'll get you some food. You must be hungry. What do you mean, one horse? You're riding out alone, son. Well, I can't let Carrie go with you and until you've settled down enough to know how to take care of her right and proper. She'll be here waiting for you, just like she said she would. Come over and sit down, Bill. You kept your promise, Bill. I always knew I would. I could. Still an awful long way to Argentina. We'll get there, Bill. I know we will. I've been building our ranch all the way here, Gary. Mile by mile, log by log. I've been building corrals and fences. Stock in the range. You're gonna have all the things you always wanted, Gary. Just like real people. Stand a chance, honey. They'd catch him before he got halfway to the border. What are we really gonna do, Dad? I don't know. I get him some clothes and clean him up. Long chase. Kind of hate to see it end this way, kid. I mean, with you still in one piece. It ain't ended yet, Mr. Swanson. I'll be back. That's right, Bill. You will be back. Could I talk to him a minute, Marshal? Alone. We got nothing to say. I think you do, Bill. Get his gun. beginning. It's the only possible way we can have anything ever. Come on, John. Let's go. Little Pat, I guess you saved yourself a horse on the deal. It's going to be as tough on her as it is on you, son. 
She really loves you. It won't be too long. When you come back, this ranch will belong to you two kids. Now, why don't you go over and say goodbye the way you should? Yes, that's right, Gary. So are you. How many mistakes can a man make? You'll hope to get away with it. Lucky Carrie. I wish that Bitter Creek and I had that same chance.